welcome to the lecture series on mathematical methods and applications. So, in the last lecture we have deal uh, application of Fourier series that how uh, Fourier series we can apply to boundary value problems. Now, uh, in this lecture we will see applications of Fourier integrals and uh, Fourier transforms. However, the main heading is application to Fourier transforms, but in this uh, we will see application of Fourier series, Fourier transforms and Fourier integrals. Okay. Now, uh, <coughs> take this equation, heat equation, this is a use of Fourier integrals. Consider heat equation this, now the heat equation is given by del u by del t is equal to c square del square u by del s square. Okay. Suppose this is a heat equation. Now, this is a bar which extend both uh, to infinity on both the sides that is bar is not of finite length it is tend to, it is uh, tends to infinity from both the sides. Okay. Now, in this case we do not have any boundary conditions like uh, uh, we have in uh, finite uh, bar when we have x from 0 to l that in that case we have a boundary condition, but uh, when the bar is tending to infinity from both the sides we do not have we do not have any boundary conditions. However, we have the initial condition which is given by u x 0 is equal to f x and of course, x varying from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. So, where f x is a given initial temperature of the bar. Now, if you want to solve this problem, if you want to solve this problem where it is an infinite bar, so how can we proceed? Again, we will use separation of variables. So, we take uh, u which is a function of x and t here as uh, f x into g t. So, uh, what will be del u by del t? It will be nothing but f x into g dash t and del square u by del x square will be nothing but uh, f double dash x into g t. So, when we substitute these two in this equation we will get f double dash x okay, it is the left hand side we have f x into g dash x g dash t will be c square f double dash x into g t. So, this implies uh, f double dash upon f will be 1 by c square g dash upon g. Now, again this is a function of x only, f is a function of x only and this is a function of t only and both are equal. So, both are equal only when it is a constant quantity. So, it is equal to k. Again as, uh, as we did in the previous lectures when k is 0 or k is p square. So, we discard both the cases because uh, if suppose here, uh, here we do not have any boundary condition still if k is a positive quantity. So, f will be nothing but c 1 e k power uh, p x plus c 2 e k power minus p x which will tends to uh, infinite as x tends to as x increases. So, which is which does not have any practical significance. You see that if you take k equal to p square suppose and f double dash will be nothing but f double dash will be nothing but p square f. So, this will be nothing f from here we get e k power p x plus c 2 e k power minus p x and s as x increases. So, this increases exponentially because of the presence of this term. Okay. So, this has no any uh, does not have any practical significance. So, we discard the, uh, the two cases when k is 0 or k is equals to p square. So, we take k equal to minus p square. So, if k equal to minus p square, so f double dash will be nothing but uh, minus p square times f uh, which implies f double dash plus p square f equal to 0 and this implies f will be nothing but uh, c 1 cos p x plus c 2 sin p x. Okay. c 1 cos p x and c 2 sin p x uh, and, uh, and g will be nothing but 
uh, from this condition uh, g dash will be nothing but uh, it is minus p square c square g. So, this implies g will be nothing but some k times e k power minus p square c square t because when we integrate both the sides we will get g equal to this. So, what will be uh, u? So, u x t will be nothing but the product of these two. So, this is nothing but uh, e k power minus p square c square t into c 1 cos p x plus c 2 sin p x. Okay. Oh, this is uh, this is not okay. Huh? This is u x t. Yeah. This is u x t uh, with a with a variable p. So, we can write it like this with a variable p. Okay. Okay. So, we, we obtain u x t p like this. Now, since it is an infinite bar, x is varying from minus to plus infinity. So, uh, so the solution u x can be obtained and p is a uh, positive quantity. So, u x t can be obtained by integrating all the terms. So, 0 to infinity it is uh, e k power minus p square c square t and it is uh, c 1 cos p x plus c 2 sin p x into t p. Now, this uh, c 1, c 2 are arbitrary constants here. So, we can take them as a function of p also. Okay. So, this c 1, c 2 we can take uh, as a function of p. So, this is integral 0 to infinity e k power minus p square c square t and this is c 1 uh, some function of p cos p x plus c 2 some function of p into sin p x whole with d p. Uh, this k will merge with when we take the product of these two, this k will merge with c 1 and c 2. Okay? So, there is no need of writing k in this expression. Now, now u x 0 is given as f x. So, this implies uh, f x will be equal to 0 to infinity uh, c 1 p cos p x because substitute t equal to 0 here plus c 2 p sin p x whole with d p. So, this is for a integral and c 1 p and c 2 p can be obtained by where c 1 p and c 2 p are nothing but. So, c 1 p is nothing but uh, it will be c 1 p will be given by minus infinity plus infinity. Uh, Minus, minus plus infinity f x cos p x into d x. Okay, it is 1 by pi times I think. Okay, it is 1 by pi times and c 2 p will be nothing but again 1 by pi times minus plus infinity f x sin p x into d p. So, let us verify it is 1 by pi or what. So, we can simplify like this f x we obtain like this and f 2 and g uh, g t is nothing but uh, this expression. So, when we put it here and integrate over this we obtain this thing. Now, uh, u x 0 is this thing. So, yeah it is. So, a p and b p here it is c 1 p and c 2 p. Okay. So, c 1 p is this expression and c 2 p is this expression which we obtained here also the same thing. Okay. Now, we substitute back to uh, this, this expressions in this uh, u x t. So, what we will obtain? So, u x t will be 0 to infinity e k power minus p square c square t and c 1 is nothing but c 1 p is nothing but uh, it is integral minus infinity plus infinity 1 by pi will can come out or minus plus infinity it is f x and it is uh, it is uh, you can you can put it f xi or something f xi because x is also here and x is also here. So, it will be a confusion. So, you can take f xi here f xi 
cos uh, p xi and uh, it is cos p x d xi this term come here plus plus e k power minus p square c square t and with this minus into plus infinity again it is f xi cos or sin it is sin p xi and uh, sin p x d xi and whole multiplied by uh, d p. So, in this way we will get back this expression so, on when we simplify this in nothing but 1 by pi integral 0 to infinity e k power minus p square c square t. So, it is again one more integral minus unit plus infinity and it is f xi is common from both the terms and it is cos a cos b plus sin a sin b so which is nothing but cos a minus b cos a minus b or uh, d xi into d p. So, this will be the required solution of this differential equation when we have an infinite bar. Okay. So, in this way we can solve uh, we can solve such type of problems we can solve such type of problem when uh, the bar is tending to infinity from both the sides using Fourier integrals. Okay. Now, come to uh, uh, use of Fourier transforms. So, let us discuss this problem. The temperature distribution u x t in a thin homogeneous infinite bar can be modeled by the initial boundary value problem this. So, now how can we use uh, Fourier transforms. So, we have already discussed the applications of Fourier series and uh, Fourier integrals that how can we use Fourier series or Fourier integrals. Now, let us uh, discuss Fourier transforms. Now, in this problem, uh, in this problem it is uh, u t is equal to c square u x x. Okay u t equal to u x x uh, this and minus infinity less than x less than infinity and t greater than 0. So, it is again an infinite bar x is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity and u x 0 equal to f x it is given to us. It is also given to us that u x t is finite as x tending to plus or minus infinity. So, what will be u x t? u x t is a temperature distribution function. So, how can you find u x t again? Now, since x is varying from both the side, it is minus infinity plus infinity. So, take Fourier transform both the sides. Now, here x is varying from minus infinity plus infinity, take, take Fourier transform with respect to x. So, first where we have to identify that uh, with because it contain two variable because u is nothing but function of two variable. So, first we have to decide that uh, with respect to which variable Fourier transform is to be taken. So, now it is uh, x is varying from minus u plus infinity to take Fourier transform with respect to x. Okay. So, when you take Fourier transform here, uh, Fourier transform of uh, Fourier transform of uh, ut which is nothing but Fourier transform of del u by del t. So, it is nothing but uh, minus infinity plus infinity del u by del t of because we are taking Fourier transform respect to x. So, it will be e k power minus eta omega x d omega eta omega x d x. Okay. So, since it is free from t, so we can take del by del t outside. So, it will be d by d t of minus infinity plus infinity u into e k power minus eta omega x d x which is nothing but d by d t of Fourier transform of u Fourier transform of u x t. Okay. So, that is why if we take Fourier transform of this side because we are taking Fourier transform respect to x. So, when we take Fourier transform this side this is nothing but d by d t of Suppose Fourier transform u x t is uh, f omega t. Okay. Suppose uh, we are Fourier transform of 
u x t we are taking as f omega t. So, it is f omega t Fourier transform of uh, u x t is f omega t which is equal to c square times. Now, Fourier transform u x x. Now, Fourier transform uh, we already know that uh, Fourier transform of uh, any derivative of t is nothing but any derivative of t is nothing but eta omega ki power n and Fourier transform of f t. So, we are taking Fourier transform with respect to x. So, here it will be it is double derivative. So, it is eta omega square Fourier transform of u x t which I are taking as f omega t. Okay. So, when we simplify this, so this is d f upon d t, where f is a function of omega and t is equal to minus c square omega square into f. So, it is d f upon f is equals to minus c square omega square d t. So, when we integrate this, it will be f is equals to some k times e k power minus c square omega square t. So, when we integrate both the sides, we get this expression. So, uh, this f is a function of uh, uh, this f is a function of omega and t. So, this k will be nothing but here k will be nothing but function of omega. Okay. So, in this way we obtain uh, we obtain f omega t which is nothing but k omega e k power minus c square omega square t. Now, it is given to us that u 0 x u x 0 is equals to f x. So, u x 0 is equal to f x. Now, take Fourier transform both the sides. So, Fourier transform of uh, u x 0 will be Fourier transform of f x and will be equal to minus infinity to plus infinity f x e k power e k power minus eta omega x into d x. Okay. And uh, that will be uh, that will be nothing but f omega 0 that you can simply take because you are putting t equal to 0. Because, because Fourier transform of uh, u x t is uh, u x t is f omega t and when we put t equal to 0 both the sides. So, f omega 0 will be nothing but Fourier transform of u x 0. So, Fourier transform of u x 0 will be nothing but f omega 0. So, when you take f omega 0 over here you get k omega. So, this k omega will be nothing but integral minus new plus infinity f x e k power minus eta omega x into d x. Okay. So, now take inverse Fourier transform both the sides in this expression. So, uh, so what, a, what we are having? So, what we obtain basically? So, now if you take uh, so, now f omega t is nothing but k omega e k power minus c square omega square t, where k omega is given by this expression. Now, taking inverse Fourier transform both the side, so u x t will be given by u x t will be given by 1 by pi, 1 by 2 pi I think, 1 by 2 pi uh, integral minus infinity plus infinity it is uh, f omega t e k power eta omega x into d omega. Okay. So, that will be equal to 1 upon 2 pi integral minus omega plus infinity it is k omega e k power minus c square omega square t into e k power eta omega x d omega. Now, k omega is given by this expression. So, you substitute it over here. You substitute it over here. 
So, what we will obtain? It is nothing but 1 upon 2 pi integral minus 1 plus infinity, it is again minus 1 plus infinity. Suppose it is, uh, suppose it is f, uh, f zeta, okay, f zeta e ki power minus eta omega zeta into e ki power minus c square omega square t into e ki power eta omega x uh, d zeta into d omega. Okay. So, when we simplify this. So, now we further simplify this. So, 1 upon 2 pi integral minus mu plus infinity minus mu plus infinity it is f zeta and uh, e k power minus eta omega it is xi minus x okay e k power minus c square omega square t d xi d omega okay now e k power eta theta is e k power minus eta theta is cos theta minus eta sin theta and uh, it will be nothing but cos cos uh, this expression is nothing but cos omega xi minus x minus eta sin xi uh, minus x omega times okay now uh, this is even function omega square is even here so this is even now sin is odd in omega okay it is it is even even into odd is odd so this will be zero from minus infinity plus infinity so we will left with only one term which is 1 upon 2 pi integral minus infinity plus infinity minus infinity plus infinity it is f zeta into cos omega xi minus x e k power minus e square omega square t d xi d omega so this will be the final solution of uh, this will be the final solution of uh, this so hence we will obtain the solution of the given differential equation is it okay so here we have uh, solved the same problem the technique which i have solved so when we simplify we obtain the same solution which we obtain over here so that's all for this problem now see one more problem uh, using fourier transforms okay this is a uh, laplace equation del square u upon del x square plus del square u upon del y square equal to 0 and x is tending from minus infinity plus infinity u is finite u is varying from 0 to pi so we will apply fourier transform with respect to x okay so let us see how so what is the equation given to us now see it is u x x plus u y y equal to 0 basically u is a function of x and y here now uh, x is varying from minus infinity plus infinity as given and u y is varying from 0 to pi we have to apply fourier transform with respect to x so apply fourier transform both the sides so here you apply fourier transform it is eta omega whole square fourier transform of uh, fourier transform of uh, ux y which i am taking as omega y okay so fourier transform of ux y because i am applying fourier transform with respect to x so it will be nothing but i am assuming as f omega y okay plus now y we are not taking uh, with respect to y so it remains as it is d square upon d square y of fourier transform of omega y is equals to 0 for a transform of u u x y okay so that will be zero okay so it will be nothing but d square f upon d y square minus omega square f equal to zero so this is d square minus omega square f equal to zero where d is nothing but d upon d y so when you simplify to so f omega y comes out to be uh, c1 e k power omega y plus c2 e k power o minus omega y again c1 and c2 are arbitrary 
constant and it is a function of 2 variable omega and y. So, we can take c 1 as a function of omega and c 2 as a function of omega. Okay. Now, we will apply the conditions given to us. Now, u x 0 is u x 0 is given to us as uh, e k power minus 2 x u naught t. Take Fourier transform both the sides. So, Fourier transform of u x 0 will be nothing but 1 upon 2 plus at omega and that is nothing but when you substitute y equal to 0 here. So, that will be nothing but f omega 0. So, when you take f omega 0 here, so f omega 0 is nothing but c 1 plus c 2 which will be equals to 1 upon 2 plus out omega. Okay. Now, second condition is u x pi equal to 0. Now, u x pi equal to 0. So, when you take Fourier transform both the sides, so u x pi it will be 0 which is equal to for, uh, f of omega pi because when you substitute uh, y equal to pi both the side we get back to this expression. Okay. So, from here when you take uh, f of omega pi which is equal to 0 so this implies c 1 e k power omega pi plus c 2 e k power minus omega pi will be equal to 0. Now, solving these two equations, we can get the values of C 1 and C 2. So, C 1 and C 2 we can obtain from here. Okay. We can easily solve these two equations and find the values of C 1 and C 2, which we can substitute over here. Okay. So, what are C 1 and C 2 that we can obtain? Okay. I am not uh, solving for C 1 and C 2. Now, f x f omega y is nothing but c 1 omega e k power omega y plus c 2 omega e k power minus omega y. Where c 1 and c 2 are governed by these two equations. We can simplify, we can solve these two equation find the values of c 1 and c 2. Okay. So, the inverse take the inverse Fourier transform both the sides. So, it will be u x y will be equal to 1 upon 2 pi times integral minus mu plus infinity uh, f omega y e k power iota omega x into d omega. So, it will be 1 upon 2 pi integral minus mu plus infinity f omega y is c 1 omega e k power omega y plus c 2 omega e k power minus omega y into e k power Ita omega x d omega. So, whatever c 1 c 2 we obtain from these two equations, we simply substitute it over here and we get the final solution, we get the final answer u x y of this Laplace uh, equation. Okay. So, in this way whenever we have an uh, x or y ranging from minus to plus infinity, we can solve those equations using Fourier transforms. Okay. So, that is all for this lecture. So, thank you.